so welcome back to this channel once again and today in this video session i'll be covering how we can read record from a pf in cl program in as400 so here we'll be going to read one record or all record of a pf in our cl program okay so let's uh, go to the example so here i created one pf named clpf1 having record format rclpf1 and these are the fields defined in this pf okay so i just compiled this using option 14 or uh, using create pf command or you can use create pf command so if i do run query on this so I have inserted two records in this PF. So rule number one and two. Okay. So now I'll be reading these records in our CLP program. Okay. By reading this CLP, CLPF one. So let's see the programs. So this is the first program. Here you can see uh, I have taken two variables NO and NM. So those variable names must be start with and ampersand okay and first one is of the decimal and the uh, other one is of character and then I declare the pf clpf1 in cl program so for that purpose I use dclf command so we can declare a pf or a file in cl program using dclf command then for reading that file in our cl program we will be using receive file command rcvf command okay so once i use this uh, command so it will read the records one by one okay means uh, for the next receive f it will read the second record and for again for the next receive f it will read the third record but here you can see there is only uh, I use this receive F and nothing else. Okay, so it will read only uh, once. So it will read only the first record of the file. Okay, and we'll be evaluating the value from the file field to the program variables. Okay, and, and at the last, the program will end. So it will not read all the records of a file. So this file has two records, but it will, it will read only one record. So I'll be compiling this. So the com Compilation command is create bind cl. Okay. So just set the debug view as star source. So this program is compiled successfully. Now I will be debugging this program. okay now i'll set the breakpoint so wait for that now call this program clpgm1 now i can if i would see and no and nm are initialized initially it is zero and it is blank now after reading the file it will read the first record and evaluate the no as one and nm as AG, ajdk okay so it basically retrieves the roll number and name so it only reads the first record and won't read the next record so now i want to read the spelling is incorrect incorrect yes i want to read all the records then how i can do that so there are two approaches to do that so i'll be showing you all the approaches one by one so this is the first approach to do that so the same program the only difference here is as you can see this is the mon message which is here and the go to commands and these are the labels okay so now 
the same thing is happening here in this program but this program will read all the records of a file clpf1 okay now i can see that i have given uh, provided a label if i take f4 here so i provided a label named read for this receive file command okay then i provided the mon message okay then after that change variable commands and then again go to so after first read so it will read the file this clpf1 and then if any record exists in that file so this uh, that record will be fetched and again it will come to go to and here it told that it, told, it tells the compiler that uh, program that it would go to the read command label so read command label is here so again uh, the compiler jumps from here to here or you can say the debugger uh, jumps from here to here so it will execute uh, this line again read receive file again okay so it will basically executes the receive file command again so it will do this till the time it won't reaches to the end of file condition so mon message message id is cpf0864 which tells so uh, this message id will be received by this procedure or you can say this program once the end of file is reached for that clpf1 okay so once this message id is received while reading this file it means that the file reached to the end of file okay so once the mon message message id this received means end of file reached what we will be doing we will be executing go to command label end so at that time it will directly jump to end and it will be out of this go to okay so it won't go to read this receive this file again okay and it will end so here we will be seeing a loop is a uh, uh, loop type thing but that is not exactly a loop so making use of go to statements and the mon message uh, we just created a loop like like thing so it will basically read all the records of that file in the cl program till the end of file uh, would get reached reached okay so let's compile this also Uh, this program compiled successfully just debug this program um, now I'll set the breakpoint Just wait for a minute. It's appearing. Call CLPGM1A. Okay. Now, so at the first RCVF execution, it won't reach to the next end of file. So it will read the first record. As you can see, NO is 1 and name is this. Again, it will go to command label read so it will go to command label read where it will execute the receive file command again okay and again this condition won't reached means end of file won't reach because this file has two records so it will read the second record okay no2 and name this now it will again go to the read label this label read okay so it will execute the receive file command now this time uh, the received message id would be cpf0864 so it will directly execute this and go to the label end okay so basically after that there is no execute table line and this go to command label end is not an executed executable executable line sorry uh, executable line so uh, that's why uh, we can see that the uh, execution uh, star, uh, goes to the execution pointer goes to the 12th line okay so this is the end of the program now the second approach would be okay 
let's name it 1b so the second approach to do this is the same program is here also so here we won't be using that uh, go to approach or the read label approach label or go to approach so here we will be using the loop okay now we don't know at what point or till what point i need to run that loop so i didn't know the execution uh, condition at what at which condition that loop will be uh, finished or stopped okay so that's why i given a condition like this if do while condition one equals to one till the time it is one equals to one run this loop so it will always be running so this is just an infinite loop okay so do while and end do but inside this if you see i just uh, added a z file command so it will read the uh, first record of the file and then it will check for this mon message that is message id so in case if this end of file reads it will leave the loop so ex in execute block i added the leave command so with uh, it leave command will leave the loop and it will come out of the loop so the infinite loop will get break once the end of file gets reached so this is the another way so the condition can be anything for me it's one equals to one you can put when do while equals to one or do while equals to two any condition it depends upon you that is an infinite that must be an infinite condition okay and then inside that loop you can break that loop using this leave command or checking the by checking the uh, mon message cpf0864 that is end of file reached or not okay let's compile this also so this program also compiled successfully pgm one b now we will uh, set the breakpoint uh, once the source appear in front of us call cl pgm one b okay now do while one equals to one yes sure it will lead the recall of that file clpf1 okay and then it will check for this message id so it won't um, occur or received by this procedure so it will lead the first record and place the value in the uh, program variable no and nm okay then it will read the second record n equals to 2 and nm equals to this okay now this time at the third iteration okay so this will uh, read the file again and it won't find any uh, next record or it will receive this message id cpf0864 and it will leave this loop okay so execute leave will get executed and it will come to the end of pgm okay because after that and do there is no such line no such executable lines which could be executed okay so that's the end of program so that's all which i want to show or which i am here to show you that how we can read a one record of a pf in cl program or all the records of a pf so there are two ways to do that uh, one is using the uh, you can say that label command label or go to statements and also we must be using that cpf0864 mon message id and again the second one is the simple the loop okay and the mon message and lead thing so these are the two approaches by which we can do this so depends upon you which which way you want to go and which you want to prefer so that's all in this video thank you and have a nice time.